me um, on a very frequent basis. And that's the thing that happened to the disposable human doing a couple weeks ago. Is, um, you know, a girl is just basically like being how a lot of girls are. And, you know, uh, seeking a self-esteem boost. And so she, well, she shouldn't be touching his body parts. Especially with certain body parts of hers. Um, while he's under the influence of alcohol. Hey, but guess what? You know, the moral authority in society, which in this case was a female, uh, failed to, you know, live up to what, you know, uh, uh, and failed to give a proper example of what was supposed to be done in that situation. Anyway, yeah. So, like, then when he makes an advance on her, after she flirted with him, oh, then she she labels him as a, a sexual deviant who sexually exploited her or, or sexually assaulted her or whatever. I've seen this shit happen way too many times. And the Prometheus, you need to address this issue, okay? Um, I'll go on with this. Now, especially when I was a kid, I did not understand that joke that was being said because I really couldn't hear it all that well. You know, just like, I don't tell a woman your business. And like, you know, I was like 10 or 11 years old. What does that mean? You know what I'm saying? What is that? What did this guy's joke even mean? I mean, like, even people that were older wouldn't necessarily understand what this guy was saying. <laughs> That phrase right there, sexual harassment, and then the look on the guy's face, exactly, that is burned into my mind ever since I began puberty. And there was the Mindy McCready, uh, the Mindy McCready um, music videos of, um, um, uh, he, he says that he wants to dance, but that's not as far as he wants to go. Um, it'll take um, 10,000 angels to help me uh, tell him no. All right. All right. Maybe it was this comment. Okay, yeah. The Prometheus right here, Dr. Claw. Says, as for the whole nice guy jerk scenario, it stems from the fact that most guys start out as being a nice guy and then become a jerk later. Keep my okay, yeah, and um, mm, all right, ah, here it is. You just indulged in victim blaming. Like, like, like why? Yeah, hmm. So when I say that the reason why the guy uh, behaves undesirably toward the woman might be in the event that she has a toxic or shitty personality, uh, personality and doesn't treat him right. I've witnessed that from personal experience, and I've seen it happen to other guys too. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, and that's why I said what I did. Um, and uh and then oh she she accused me of blaming the victim um and in the video you were implying it is unfair to nice guys that girls date jerks instead and then complain about it yeah I, I've, I've been complaining about that for years uh that actually began to tumble me and the disposable human doing down the rabbit hole uh that and um and a few other things that I mentioned. Um, oh, uh, once again, she blames men. If the guy's a jerk who starts out as being a nice guy later and then reverts to his true nature, how's that the fault of the girl? I, my, my former girlfriend used to say that shit to me, and I used to hear other girls say it too, you know, and other women saying, they used to say, well, men are assholes, and they just pretend that they're a nice guy temporarily so they can lead you on and, and make you think that you can trust them. But, but then after a little while, after a couple months, then they show who they really are, which is an asshole. Man. Yeah, uh, they, they do that. 
And, uh, you know, I've had it here for, let's see, how many years? You know? So, uh, bitch, you can just fucking deal with it. Alright? Alright. Um, okay, and it is the fault of the girl. Okay? Uh, because, you know, okay, it's like on November 8th of this year, 2012. Um, there was a fight that happened outside of my apartment, uh, in my yard. And, like, I was talking to my friend, uh, actually I was talking to the disposable human doing on the phone. And after I just got home and I was wanting to watch a movie after I talked to him on the phone and all that, well, that got interrupted by a fight that broke out. And, um, commotion down the stairs and all that and then around my apartment and um out my front yard and I started recording right as they they had stopped fighting and were running down the hill and um so all these violent guys you know ran down over the hill down into the one other part of the yard next to a neighboring building here comes one of those girls you know takes her shirt off has her bra on and all that and walks down the hill with a baseball bat toward the violent guys. And I don't know what happened because it was out of sight. And besides, it was dark anyway. So, you know, I don't know if she had hit anybody or was just yelling at them or whatever. There's a lot of yelling going on. And I got that caught on camera. Um, and then right as I start to walk out of the apartment, um, there uh, you can hear somebody calling the police. And, uh... Um, anyway, um, and then I got some of the stuff on camera where they were telling the story of what happened. They're telling that to the police. Later on, I, I got the video, and I'm going to give it, you know, I was trying to give it to the police officer um, on a flash drive, which I still haven't received back yet. And It's been, gosh, it was the night of November 8th, 2012, and I gave it to him. Right now it's November 27th, so it's been... Been almost three weeks. Uh, I still haven't got that flash drive back yet, and he knows where I live because he come out here. I mean, he knows who I am because uh, I filled out that statement of what I witnessed. All right, and on the flash drive, along with the video, is a text file of my name and address, phone number, everything. Um, and I live within his jurisdiction. That's why he was here. Um. I just need to get that flash drive back from because, you know, it's like, well, that's that's money that I spent, you know, and um, it's mine. And so anyway, um, so anyway, as I'm trying to give him this flash drive, he's talking to the girl who supposedly is the reason why this whole fight happened. Uh, I feel like I don't know a whole lot about it because I kept hearing all these conflicting stories and that's why the policeman said he's just going to drop the whole case because nobody's stories matched up. Uh, one of the women said that, you know, that was, well, that was trying to break it up or whatever. She's like, well, no, I was trying to break them up and one of them hit me in the chest. You see this big red mark? And, bah, bah, bah. and, uh, and, and then, well, like, but in the video... Uh, you know, uh, of them out there um, talking amongst themselves, uh, you can hear her say, I did, <laughs> she's like, I did a grand slam on his head and I'll do it again. And that's when she was, you know, had the baseball bat um, that supposedly didn't exist whenever she was talking to the cop. And they found it later. Um, and that's why he's dropping the case, because, you know, he said he said if he has to take one person to jail, he's going to have to take all of them to jail, because he said all of them are almost equally guilty. Um, and I don't know who started it, I don't know, whatever. All I saw, or first of all, all I heard was a whole bunch of noise coming down the steps. Um, then I look out the window, and there's three guys kicking one guy on the ground in my yard like six feet in front of my window so I grabbed an SD card and was trying to load it up on the camera and started recording just as one guy you know as they all get up and run down over the hill and there's one guy straggling behind and all that so anyway and uh, 
so after the cop he watched this video in my apartment on my uh, TV and, after, and he kept having me replay this part where that woman said that she did a grand slam on that dude's head and she'll do it again kept having me he kept having me replay it and replay it over and over again so he can hear it and uh, <laughs> after he heard that he said well I guess I need to go talk to so-and-so again and uh, you know because um, her story didn't match up with what she actually said on video during the event that it happened so anyway um, but anyway the point is there's this girl like in her 20s and she was out in the parking lot she had just finally came back from wherever she was at and she she sounded all disturbed to find out that this this all happened because of her uh, she wasn't there at the time when it happened but it was something to do with her something about her um, somebody came looking for her or whatever and then they got to fight with whoever anyway it's just all dumb and she was kind of not exactly crying but she sounded emotional she says well, well, I, I kind of feel like this is my fault well I know it's not because no one here but I kind of feel like I'm responsible because this is about me and, 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 and it kind of reminded me of the first Terminator movie where like people get killed because of Sarah Connor and like the Terminator's like tracking her down in the phone book and he keeps finding the wrong Sarah Connor and you know and so she feels all responsible because you know, because of her name and all that, you know, somebody's looking for her, and then other people end up dying while some guy's trying to kill her. So she feels some sort of responsibility. Mm. So anyway, just some similarities. You know, not not the same case or scenario, but just a few little similarities. You know, expression and all that. So anyway, um, <clears throat> um, so anyway, this girl was out in the park lot, and I was. You know, I was standing around because I was waiting to give. I was waiting for the cop to get done talking to her, so I can give the cop a, a flash drive of the video of the incident, and because uh, I was a witness, at least a part of it. And uh, <laughs> and after you know, she talked about how she feels kind of responsible because this happened regarding her and all that. And <laughs> oh my gosh, what I heard next, I I just I should have snickered and burst out laughing. Because the cop, he, I mean, the cop is a nice guy, and he's a respectable guy and all that. And he's got a reputation in the town where I live as being tough on crime. And and also, he's got, you know, he, he's got, like, a helping heart for for nice people and all that. He's always been cool with me. And, like, I've always seen him treat other people good, but then I've heard, <laughs> I've heard bad stories about this cop, you know, coming from drunk drivers and stuff and anyway <clears throat> um so then like and this cop he's he's very professional i mean he's pretty much from what i've seen he's pretty much the way police are expected to be um and anyway so anyway um so this cop, he was telling this girl, you know, who's in her 20s, and I, I don't even know her name, and it doesn't even really matter. Um, and he's telling her, <laughs> this is what I should have laughed about, but I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to make enemies with this cop <laughs> for what I should have said. <laughs> um, but he, um, he said to her, he says, he was telling her that she should have. That that he he was telling her that she shouldn't waste her time with 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 jerks, and and he says, uh, you you should find you a nice guy. You you're gonna do that for me, right? You're you're gonna get with a nice guy, right? You know you don't need this kind of drama. You're gonna get you, you should get with a nice guy. Can can you promise me that you will? And I should I should have burst out laughing because it's like I just should have said something to him. It's like, hey, officer, it's like. You know, it's like, you know, why don't you tell her to, why don't you give her advice on how to do something else that she's not going to take seriously, you know? I mean, wh why are you even telling her that? She don't want to hear it. Uh, she's not going to take your, she's not going to heed your warning. She's not going to take your advice seriously. She's not going to do what you're telling her to do. I mean, and besides, it's the assumption that she's a good girl. Um, I mean, you know, it's just, see, it's the whole bias, you know, that just because she's a girl, 
that she's somehow inherently innocent. Uh, Esther Viller talks about this in her book, The Manipulated Man. Uh, well, she talks about how women do, females uh, do whatever it takes to preserve the appearance of innocence, uh, to preserve the perception of, of weakness, the perception of, um, of being fragile, uh, and to also preserve child, uh, childlike uh, physical appearance. That's why they wear makeup, to try to preserve their youth as long as possible. Um, and they do this to appeal to a specific male characteristic of the role of protection provider um, to basically exploit that. Um, she, in a way, now Esther Villar describes this in her book, where she describes that women, that women, somewhat, what they do is they, they kind of, in a way, they masquerade as if they're children. Uh, you know, uh, the perception of vulnerability is enforced, you know, of, of the woman's vulnerability, therefore, to provoke a reaction from the male that of protection um, and trying to get him to treat her a specific way. Uh, this is why women actually enjoy being objectified. I know they bitch about it and fuss and all that, um, but they enjoy being objectified because, uh, and Barbarossa got it right when he said that uh, just like a you know a valuable object is protected because it's inherently valuable in and of itself therefore worthy of being you know uh, protected um, and you know I feel like I can't do Barbarossa any justice because he did it he, he told it so well now his point could be elaborated upon even more uh, and I'm sure he knows that uh, I'm sure he knows that but he just probably felt like he didn't have enough time in the video to articulate that um, e even further, uh, although I I do respect his attempt very much because he did very well, and they do women do this stuff. I mean, if you really see, it's the thing. If feminism is so shallow and so superficial, they only focus on the surface stuff. Like, look, like look at this. Look at what the Femetheus does, and she regards herself as like a leading feminist. You know, who's better than most other feminists. Okay, what she's doing, she's blaming the man in in these situations. Like, and it really shows a lack of equality, and it and it, it really imposes a double standard because because you know, first of all, she's not getting to the root core of the problem. She's not even penetrating through a few surface layers. Um, she's just regurgitating more junk. Uh, more shallow, superficial, just junk. Uh, that's what the Femetheus is doing. I mean, look. I mean, no. Like, if if a, okay, if a woman says that all men are jerks and that she's dated ten or twelve different guys during her lifetime and they all turn out to be jerks, what does that say about her? It says it. Well, the Femetheus tries to say that men are just inherently assholes and that a girl can't find a good guy because no good guys exist. No, no, I mean, like, like, what if I dated, like, 20 girls during my lifetime, and then I said they were all bitches? H how would that turn out? Yeah, people would say, well, maybe you need to re-examine uh, the types of people you go for. That That's, actually, that's what's been said to me before, um, when, uh, when I was on a, uh, when I was commenting on a page on Facebook about, uh, about the friend zone and all that and, and how, you know, the nice guy curse and that sort of thing and women say they want assholes and or women say they want nice guys but then they actually go for assholes and that sort of thing. But you gotta understand why the girl goes for that asshole, you know, because first of all, you know, that it, he's, he's masculine. Second of all is, you know, he'll give her the appropriate amount of drama that she feels comfortable with, the comfort of the familiar. Um, he, he gives her uh, the types of circumstances in which she is able to bitch about 
and therefore exploit society's sympathy and therefore feel like an inherently valuable object. I mean, just look at how women behave. I mean, they say they want nice guys, and yet they go after assholes. And of course they say they want nice guys, because that's the whole, like, status quo of, like, you know, of social expectations. You know, it says, it, what, it, what it says is, I'm a nice girl because I want a nice guy. And it's a reflection. Okay, that's what it has to deal with. Okay, she openly declares that she wants a nice guy, but she gets with an asshole. And she keeps doing it, you know. Not, I'm not saying that Prometheus does this, but I'm saying, you know, I'm not saying that she's the girl in this scenario. I'm just saying, you know, hypothetically, a girl that gets in this situation uh, and all that. Um, I've seen this time after time after time again, and so many times I've been the guy who's encouraged these girls to leave these guys. You know, I'm like, if he doesn't treat, I mean, if he treats you so shitty, then why don't you just leave him? Well, I can't. Meh. Well, well, why can't you? It's just hard. Meh. Like, why is it hard? Well, it just is. You just don't understand. Meh. You know, only in, like, one of those cases has it been that a girl said that the guy was going to beat her or whatever. But a lot of the times they just won't even give a very... They won't even give a very detailed explanation or anything like that. They just... It's just hard to leave him. Why is, like, you know, is he paying your bills and you just won't work a job? Or is it that, you know, you don't know if you're going to find another person to, um, you know, to satisfy your sexual needs? Or, like, you know, like, like what? I mean, you know, and if the guy leaves the girl, then he's labeled as having commitment issues. So there's even more bullying. Uh, so anyway, I could just go on forever and forever, but I don't need this video to be four hours like the last one. Okay? okay. Uh, Alright, on this topic. Are you saying that women, uh, that a woman who gets the shit beaten out of her by a man deserves it regardless of the circumstances because she probably did something to deserve it? Well, that's how it's portrayed. Uh, uh, whenever a woman beats the shit out of a man, it's like, well, what did he do to, what led up to that? Well, what did he do? My, my, my. You know, like he has to fucking prove his own innocence. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm tired of this double standard. And you know what? If society regards it as being okay for a woman to hit a man, then maybe it should be okay, you know, in the name of equality, for a man to hit a woman. Okay, I can I can already see the tidal wave of um, of arguments and and claims and allegations that are gonna like that that could just flood in when a person says that, or especially when I just now said it. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you, I do not believe in violence. I mean, I know violence happens. Obviously, I can't say that it doesn't ever exist. But like, what I'm saying is, violence should not exist. Uh, nobody should be violent to anybody. Okay, uh, like that, like that guy who is on my floor, and my former girlfriend was cheating on me with that guy. I didn't get violent toward him. Didn't get violent toward her either. <laughs> but I packed up a bunch of her stuff and set it on the floor in a big pile there in the living room and expected her to leave. And I gave her a lecture about it a little while later. And that's what I do in situations like that. Or how about the time she nearly burnt down the apartment because she didn't know how to carefully cook stuff. Um, she didn't seem to understand that, um, you know, that, that cooking oil, just like any oil, flashes. And what I mean by flashes, it ignites. You know, it reaches its flash point and it, it ignites once it reaches a certain temperature. Now, I knew this uh, by the time I was her age. A uh, little experiment I did, trying to see if I can get cooking oil to catch fire, and I basically had to heat it up a whole lot um, because you, actually you can use oil to put out most types of fires. Now oil is a flammable substance, but if you have a small fire, oh, um, the type of fire you would have in something the size of a coffee, uh, uh, 
um, in the size of something like a coffee can, like a fire that you know would be the size of a coffee can. You could put it out with a quart of oil. Um, now oil is flammable, so why is it you're able to put out small fires with oil? Well, that's because the temperature of the oil is too low to catch fire, and that fire in something the size of a coffee can does not provide enough heat, especially enough heat in the time frame, to heat that oil to its flash point. Uh, this goes back 10 years ago, back in 2002, when uh, when um, me and a friend of mine, we wanted to basically have ourselves a little campfire or whatever. And we took a coffee can and put a couple cups worth of kerosene in there. Well, obviously kerosene is flammable. It's the basis for jet fuel. Uh, jet fuel is mostly kerosene with a few other additives to, like, you know, enhance how it burns. Okay. Um, and people use kerosene heaters in the winter. Um, so we had some kerosene in a, um, in a, in a, uh, <clears throat> in a, uh, coffee can, and we lit a match, and we are thinking, yeah, this will set this thing on fire, you'll go poof, right, like gasoline. No, it didn't. Actually, we threw the match in there, and the, and the match went out, so we lit a stick on fire, stuck it in there, uh, the kerosene put the fire out. And we knew it was kerosene based on how it smelled and the container that it came from. It's just that kerosene has a flash point also that is higher than that of gasoline. Now gasoline has fumes and therefore has a lower flash point just like alcohol. Uh, a spark can set gasoline off because of, mostly because of the fumes. You know, because gasoline, it, it evaporates much easier than oil does. Uh, it has a lower flash point. Same thing with alcohol. Um, for example, room temperature is enough to cause alcohol to evaporate. Not really quickly, but it does, you know, start the evaporation process. So what happens is um, you don't even have to get the flame in contact with the alcohol. You just get it near the alcohol, and then the vapors will catch fire, and then catch and then then flash the alcohol it'll catch the alcohol on fire now it's not like that for for kerosene or diesel fuel or oil or anything like that uh, because they have a much higher flash point uh, so anyway um, my firm, former girlfriend was cooking some fries in a pan with oil and she didn't like the poppies getting on her as she called them uh, you know grease spatters or whatever so she, I found this out, she'd put a lid over top of it. Well, the lid uh, kept in the heat, and it heated up the oil, from, you know, the, um, it allowed the oil to heat up hot enough to where it flashed, and it caught fire. Well, guess who was expected to deal with this? Me, because she had froze up in fear, and then I was so worried and paranoid about things catching fire that I, uh, acted on my instinct to be a hero and um the only thing well we didn't have a fire extinguisher the only thing I can think of was just to get that pan out of there well the flames weren't coming out of there very high because there was a lid on there couldn't exactly turn off the stove because it was too close to the fire so I grabbed the uh, pan and I was trying to bring it you know bring it away from there well the heat was kinda getting to me so I had to set it down on the floor well, the lid came off, and then it got oxygen, and it just whooshed up flames, and you just actually hear the fire roar. I was scared, and I'm looking at the spot on the floor right now where the carpet was uh, melted, and luckily it did not catch fire. Um, and uh, I yelled at her to open up the door, and um, I... Um, Flames are like two feet tall or something like that. And um well I was carrying this this uh this this pan of well, they had flaming cooking oil in it. It had some fries in there. And uh some of the oil got on my hand and burnt my hand right here in the webbing between the index finger and the thumb. Still got a little bit of scar tissue from that. Um and as I got toward the door, uh, 
the flames whooshed up my face, singed the hair on my head, basically effectively sunburnt my nose, you know, that kind of effect. Uh, and I, I was screaming because I was scared. And yeah, I threw this pan outside on the concrete from which it got cold enough to where the flames went out within about a minute. And I was not happy about that. And all I did was I lectured her. She went up to her, um, and then I spent a little while ventilating the apartment because smoke alarms were going off really good. And I had the door open and window open and fan and trying to ventilate all that smoke out. And then I uh, went up and, uh, you know, because she went up to her friend's apartment just upstairs. And then I, um, I lectured her right there in front of her friends. And she's sitting on the couch and all that. And I stand there and I'm like, y you really need to be careful because we, al we almost became homeless tonight. And it's like, when you cook like that, you have to pay attention to what you're doing. You, you need to pay attention, okay? Because, like, I was lecturing her, you know? I didn't yell. I didn't raise my voice. I did not I did not raise a fist. I did not do anything like that. Oh, and supposedly this is some big fucking crime, uh, according to her. And, and, it's, and it's some type of abuse. Well, that's interesting because, uh, you know, I'm abused by customers, you know, almost every day at my job, you know? Um... And, uh, oh, I've been harassed and abused a bunch by customers. And not just me. It happens to anybody that works with the public, you know. And I've been, you know, and a lot of people treat me in ways that they don't like being treated when I do it right back to them. So it tells you that it's not very good behavior in which they treat me with. And they just don't treat me with that kind of behavior. They, so many people do it to each other. They, I mean, you know. A lot of people do it to other people. Uh, you know, they expect that, you know, their actions of behaving like that will be tolerated, but they don't want it to happen, you know, back to them. It's just human nature. Okay, so anyway. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, isn't that the same argument that the mainstream feminists use? It's like, well, I mean... What if it is the same argument? I mean, like, feminists seem to get rewarded for using that argument, you know? So, like, why shouldn't I act like feminists? I mean, you know? Like, or why shouldn't I be an asshole? I mean, like, this world rewards assholes. It's like nice people only get used. Um, and, yeah, uh, feminist, or Femetheus needs to learn what toxic behavior is. I mean, all she has to do is look in a mirror. Um, women are toxic, and women treat men in ways that they don't like being treated. Well, and, you know, about this going gay stuff, like, um, like, um, like, uh, oh, um, yeah, Femetheus says, are you sure that MGTOW members aren't just homosexual? I don't mean to be an, I don't mean that to be an insult, but everything I everything I've seen from MGTOs seems to indicate a lot of man on man love and relationships. Maybe maybe you woman blaming, victim blaming, misogynistic fellas can just love one another instead. You're already basically there. Seems like it'd be easier for you. Uh no, it's not that way, actually. Um we are attracted to women. We just feel we just feel like we shouldn't have women in our lives because um you know we we we're we're losing interest in women. Um I mean, we can't help that we're attracted to them, but what we can help is how we behave. And you know, when a girl flirts with a guy, persistently and then he takes interest in her because of that um and then he pursues her as a love interest and then she um portrays him to be a threat to her and when that keeps happening in society um this is why men are now given the incentive to just wake up and learn that women are just I mean so many women are just not desirable anymore I mean, women can't even seem to obey their own standards, and that's the problem. But, you know, you're dipshit, uh, Dr. Kalal, so that's why you don't understand this, because you're shallow. Um, 
Alright, let's continue with this here. All of a sudden, no one's upset anymore? It's okay because she's a woman and he's a boy? Am I the only one who finds this disturbing? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Now, now, obviously, what's in this video here is a um, an exaggeration, but it's it, it it does capture you know and and express that men often do turn a blind eye to um, female uh, uh, sex offenders because well one of the things is because you know uh, well the way it's um, regarded in society if um, if um, you know, a man can get uh, sex from a woman, then he must be lucky. Um, and then, um, and then, uh, now that music you might hear, that's not coming from my apartment, that's actually, I believe it's in the parking lot, the neighbors got their car stereo up fairly loud. And, uh, so anyway, um, so I would like for there not to be any allegations of copyright infringement um, from within my apartment you know occasionally you might hear the compressor of the air, of the uh, of the refrigerator kick on and of course uh, well, you can probably hear my uh, nail clippers that I'm using right now and uh, but if you hear that music in the background that is not me that is not my apartment that is the neighbors okay and you probably hear some voices also yeah, I heard their voices. The neighbors are very noisy. And uh, so anyway, <clears throat> um, yeah, and besides, society is is so distracted by hearing um, about how women are always victims of sex crimes and all that, and you never really hear much about male victims of sex crimes. And it's, of course, implied by gynocentric bigots known as feminists that men are incapable of being sexually victimized. Now, why would that be? Are men superior to women? Are they? Because I did not originally believe so. But if that's what you're going to imply by the whole overall comparison, um, then maybe you should uh, take that in, into consideration. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. Hmm. Oh yeah, Hell Casey Anthony thing. Let's look into that. Oh, hello. What's this elegant machine caressing my milk chocolate skin? It's the best damn razor you've ever seen. That's what. It's the Braun Electric Razor. And this is where we put them to the test. What do you need to test the razor? BraunTestLabs.com Patient, it is Monday. I am Philip DeFranco, and this is you watching me talk about newsy tab stuff and things that matter to me today. And a quickie note before we get started, it is Cyber Monday, meaning the 4 humanpeoplescom website has a sale. That, of course, is my merch website where you can get our posters instead of $15 for $4. A lot of the shirts, meaning all of the shirts that have been out of stock, are now back on a discount. And if you were late to the party, you didn't see my video yesterday, these sales will only exist till midnight tonight, or until they sell out, which certain things have started selling out. So if you want to jump in on that, top link in the description down below. But let's jump into the first story of the day. And it seems right that the first thing I talk to you guys about are all my favorite bits from Black Friday, which I actually found out today is not a weekly holiday where old Massachusetts who took his girlfriend's two-year-old son to a Kmart. But okay, I don't need to hear about Black Friday. Bits from Black Friday, which I... 
account. And if you were late to the party, you didn't see my video yesterday. <coughs> the sales will only exist till midnight tonight, or until they sell out, which certain things have started selling out. So if you want to jump in on that, top link in the description down below. But let's jump into the first story of the day. And it seems right that the first thing I talked to you guys about are all my favorite bits from Black Friday, which I actually found out today is not a weekly holiday where old white people disapprove of their daughter's decisions, but is in fact the one time a year where all the stereotypes in America finish their Thanksgiving dinner and go, hey, let's go shopping, and then terribleness ensues. Here are some of my favorites that happened this year. There was the unnamed 34-year-old man from Springfield, Massachusetts, who took his girlfriend's two-year-old son to a Kmart, but then as a sign of good parenting, he was like, it's gonna get crazy in there, you just stay in this car that I'm gonna lock with the windows up, then goes into the store to purchase his 51-inch TV, gets it, but is so overwhelmed by the craziness, or he gets that he drove there with the two-year-old in the car and calls a friend to pick him up. Luckily, some Kmart employees noticed, were like, what the hell is with this kid? Broke the window, pulled him out of the car, took him to a hospital. So we have our parents of the year, but then we go to San Antonio, Texas. Reportedly, two men got into a fist fight in Sears because one of them- Good, shame some more men. It sarcasm emphasized. Yep, just, uh, yep cut the other. So in response, one man punches the other, and in response to being punched, the guy whipped out a gun, which caused the crowd to scramble, but no one was arrested because the guy had a concealed permit, and that's completely legal in Texas, apparently. Then the gift that keeps on giving flo- Yeah, you dipshit. It's called self-defense, you dumb fuck. Y you know what I'm saying? People shouldn't be punching and hitting each other, and, you know, we're told all this bullshit that, like, that Al-Qaeda terrorists are hiding underneath every bed and in every shadow, and behind every locked door and all that, you know, we're fed all this fear mongering. I mean, it's no surprise a guy would want a gun to protect himself with. And the fact that he had a concealed carry permit means that he has no criminal history and means that he is a law abiding citizen, which uh, means that he is trusted by that particular state in which he resides to carry a loaded handgun with him at practically all times, okay? So you should understand this as an achievement of law-abiding citizenry, but you don't because you're dumb fuck, you don't got a clue, and you've already displayed some misandry. Florida, a woman who was apparently looking for her sister-in-law was obstructing the flow of traffic. The police officers were like, ma'am, please don't do it. She didn't listen, so they tried to escort her from the building. She then reportedly started, like, throwing items to which a police officer then tackled and cuffed her. In Covington, Washington, a couple was run over by a 71-year-old man outside of Walmart. In Maryland, a 14-year-old was robbed by five men at a bed, bath, and beyond, which may be the first time historically anyone has ever been robbed for a comforter. And then, of course, the final one, what everyone wonders every year, is anyone going to die? Well, it appears that an alleged shoplifter may have been killed by Walmart employees trying to subdue him. According to the police report, a middle-aged man was stealing two portable DVD players, walked out, was then followed by two Walmart employees and private security. When they caught up to him, the private security then put him in a chokehold to bring him down to the ground to hold him until police arrived. And somehow between that and when the police arrived, he died. As of recording this video, there is an investigation. The coroner has not released a cause of death yet, but I mean, you kind of just guess. One, he was choked to death, or two, he probably had a heart attack. So I guess the main point, one, yes, people still do suck, and two, this is why I I hate Black Friday. Like, I did it one time and I was like, no, never again. You get to just see en masse what people will do to get what they want over other people. I'll play it again because he's right, actually. Black Friday. Like, I did it one time and I was like, no, never again. You get to just see en masse what people will do to get what they want over other people. And it's kind of funny. It makes me think of, like, what? He's actually right. It is a testament to the, to the selfish human nature and all that. I mean... I, I relate to him on that topic because it does piss me off when people just mistreat other people and step on them and, and are willing to victimize other people. And just, yeah, so like, so this dude kind of pissed me off on some topics, but I do relate to him on the whole Black Friday thing because I don't like when people behave all selfishly and just greedy and all that happens if America just loses power for a week. Like, these people are fighting over Furbies and off-brand televisions. What happens when it's over water, food, life? You can't even see how thin the thread is that holds our society together. But Superman, ultimate point, hashtag America. Next, I have your douchebag of the day today, and that is Chris Brown. Now, do not forget, Chris Brown is not on the news today because he once again beat Rihanna with an umbrella, Ella, Ella, a bot. Because it appears someone got so hilariously under his skin, he has now deleted his account. And all of this is thanks 
thanks to a lady by the name of Jenny Johnson. Chris Brown tweeted, I look old as fuck. I'm only 23. To which he responded, I know. Being a worthless piece of shit can really age a person. Chris responds eloquently enough, Take them teeth out when you suck in my dick, ho. Then Jenny, It's ho, not ho, you ignorant fuck. Chris then showcases his wit with, I should fart while you're giving me top. Seize the day, hashtag carpe diem. Jenny then sends Chris Brown a link just in case Chris Brown forgot that he is still Chris Brown, the same guy who, you know, did this to Rihanna. Then Chris does two things that are really weird. One, he says, my mom says hello. She told me not to shart in your mouth. Wanted me to shit right on the retina. Hashtag pink eye. Adding, let me leave this bitch alone. It's good to know my worth by listening to a bitch that is worthless. Hashtag I win. And that tweet alone is just amazing. Like in one tweet, he managed to call women worthless and to prove the point that if I say I win, well, damn it, I win. For example, did you see that Patriot? Okay. I just wonder if this guy's a pussy bagger. Um... Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, just the whole... I've seen plenty of examples where where women treat men horribly. And, you know, some people might say it's wrong, but it's, it doesn't change the overall perception of society. Both genders are capable of horrible things. Why is it only stereotyped that the, men, that the male gender does these horrible things? And why is it stereotyped that the female gender, gender is automatically by default innocent and 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 uh and pure and always victims no it, it's not like that i mean there are women that do shitty things also i mean damn i mean how about the woman that like killed her boyfriend or whatever with visine just to get his attention It's a tradition, honey. In spirits bright, what fun it is to mm. make new traditions with Pillsbury Grand Cinnamon Rolls. A woman who tried to poison her boyfriend with the Visine didn't follow Ginger's advice. ABC's Lindsay Davis is here with the latest on that. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, George. Kind of makes you want to cover your coffee this morning. There are about 15,000 of these poisoning cases a year. Typically, women are the culprits. And while they're often motivated by a number of things, Vicki Jo Mills admits she poisoned the father of her child not for money or revenge, but something else entirely. For years, 45-year-old Thurman Edgar Nesbitt III suffered from nausea and vomiting, blood pressure fluctuation, and difficulty breathing. He told police he suspected someone was putting something in his water. Police say that someone was this woman, his 33-year-old girlfriend, Vicki Jo Mills. We drew blood to sent away to the lab uh, to see what chemical it might possibly be. And the something she was allegedly lacing his water with? Visine, it gets the red. Visine is apparently capable of doing much more than getting the red out. According to medical experts, when administered orally in large quantities, Visine can cause dangerous side effects, including blurred vision, respiratory failure, seizures, even a coma. Police arrested Mills Thursday, charging her with aggravated assault, simple assault, and reckless endangerment for reportedly putting the eye drops in her boyfriend's drinking water about a dozen times over the past three years, causing him to become severely ill. According to the affidavit, she never meant to kill him, only wanted him to pay more attention to her. In most of these scenarios, it's been women attempting to poison men, and they tend to use what is readily available. Eye drops are clearly readily available. This Ohio woman spent 15 days in jail earlier this year after she put eye drops in her former co-worker's coffee. She said she did it for revenge. That's also what this North Carolina woman said motivated her to squeeze a few drops of Visine into her co-worker's drink at Pizza Hut. Fortunately, none of these plots have led to any deaths. They've just left a few victims seeing red. Mills remains free on $75,000 bail and heads back to court next month, George. Okay, Lindsay, thanks. Let's get more on this now with our GMA legal analyst, Dan Abrams. And Dan Very interesting. Uh, so she killed a man uh, by poisoning him to death over time with Visine. Hey, 
gets out free. Now we see um, there are several examples of where women poison people. Now it doesn't say exactly who um, who is um, you know whether it's male or female being poisoned. Now in one particular case, it was a male who was poisoned to death. But um, you see the the people doing the poisoning are actually women. Um, and so why is this not causing a nationwide panic about, you know, women preparing food or beverages or, or serving food and beverages? Why is there not some kind of, you know, uh, distrust in society for women? Uh, all it takes is maybe two or three guys. You know, all, matter of fact, it only takes one percent of men uh, being rapists. You know, to cause, or, or maybe let's say two percent of men uh, happen to be rapists. It only takes a tiny percentage of men doing that sort of a thing to cause all kind of fear and panic and and distrust. Uh, toward the male gender, and it changes public policy, uh, and and then shifts sh uh, social bias and all these sorts of things. Um, and then there, there, here's an example just on this one news report where more than you know at least three women just right here in this in this uh, news report have poisoned people. Some of them are for revenge, and some of them are for well to get her to get the guy's attention. So why did she want more attention from him? I mean, wasn't him giving her space, like, good enough? You know, you see, women can be very fickle. And, anyway, um, yeah. I mean, you know, there's been women that put their kids in microwaves and, and kill them in microwave ovens. Uh, and then putting the baby on the heater, and then the baby dies from that. Um all kind of stuff then so why is it that the courts give automatic default custody to the mother and say that it's in the best interest of the child because I had to hear that back in February of this year 2012 and all that um, you know uh, on my court appearance for custody of my kid and uh, now nah, it was great the female judge she kind of she kind of grilled my former girlfriend on the topic of keeping in contact, you know, because, you know, me and this person have uh, joint custody of the child in terms of decision making. But then uh, primary physical care custody, you know, um, it was automatically granted toward, you know, the mother, uh, which was my former girlfriend, and the kid mostly lives with her and then gets visitation with me every week and all that um and uh one of the questions that the judge asked uh my former girlfriend was now, now do you trust him do, do you trust uh him uh to keep the child overnight unsupervised and she's like y yes your honor yes or, or anyway and uh of course i mean you know because she wants her break away from like taking care of the kid, you know, she used to regard it as a vacation. I might still have that recording of where she, she said that she was a slave to, the, you know, to the baby and all that, and it's like, well, she's the one that, that thought that kids were so, that were a fashion accessory and, and, you know, and decided to have kids for a living, you know, that's her career choice is having kids and all that, and then uh, and then she bitches about being a slave to to taking care of a kid, and all that, and of course, you know, some people have talked about how CPS needs to be called on her, because the kids have been sick all year, um, you know, me and my mom, we, you know, finally nursed back my kid to health, and all that, now he's sick again, or... Or, okay, anyway, yep, and then the other one's sick and all that, and they live pr 
you know, with their mother and um, can't seem to take care of, she can't seem to take care of herself or them, you know, she's, and from what I hear, her apartment's bigger than mine. She gets $120 a month from me in child support, then gets, I forget how many hundreds of dollars in food stamp, gets WIC on uh, both kids. I think she still gets uh, handouts and food and stuff from this one church that her mom takes her to, only for the purpose of getting handouts because they don't really necessarily believe in Christianity. Oh, uh, there's the noisy neighbors again. Uh, let's see. Um, she gets Medicaid. Uh, she lives practically almost right across the street from the hospital. Lives only about a block away from uh, from a significant hospital in the area. Um, you know, and um, anyway, um, ha still, you know, almost 22. No, actually, she is 22 years old now. Still has no vehicle. I had my first vehicle when I was 15 years old. Um, you know, and um, still doesn't. She still doesn't have a vehicle. And I don't trust her to drive with my kids. You know, like she just. Oh my gosh, she's. She never really learned how to drive properly because uh, she don't have much driving experience at all. Um, she gets all panicked about stuff and freaks out and like nearly like hits some people. She she said that. She thought that they were poles in the middle of the road and all that. Um, what else? Yeah, people have talked about how they feel like CPS should be called on her because she doesn't take care of the kids very well. And, you know, the kid's sick all year. I mean, how can you be sick all year? Now, of 12 months, you know, the kid's only well for, like, maybe two of them. You know? Now, here's another topic. Okay. We're told, and I was told this, too by the lawyers that um that you know um that the reason why fathers can't get default custody of the child is because the father is presumably at work all the time so you know um so the father's not around necessarily enough to take care of the child and this and this and that and so it's in the best interest of the child to be with the mother um and that sort of thing but I'm thinking like why Okay, so they give default custody to the mother, and yet this, the, the state expects the mother to get a job to pay taxes and support herself and to support the state and, and all this other stuff and, and to support herself and her kids. They, they give her the kids and yet expect her to work a job and so in which the kids are going to get put in daycare. The kids are going to get put in daycare anyway, whether the father has custody or whether the mother has custody, because if they're in the physical custody of, of one of the parents, and then that parent happens to have a job, whether it's the mother or the father, then that kid's going to be in daycare like for the first few years of its life anyway. So, why, so my point is, why does default custody have to be granted toward the mother? I mean, it seems like it's a waste, and it just extorts money from men, you know, and then, oh, and then the other argument is, you know, well, the, you know, well, well you know, the father might, you know, might not be, it might not be so good for the father to have total custody of the kid because he could be a sexual deviant, and then that would give him more opportunities to sexually assault the child. Well, the same thing goes, um, uh, for the female, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, what if the mother is a sexual deviant? Then, you know, her having default custody of the child gives her the opportunity, uh, more opportunities than anybody else to sexually assault the child. I mean, we, we see these feminists shame men so much and imply that if, um, that if somebody wants custody of a child, uh, whether it's an adoption or a biological child or whatever, then somehow th their motivation for getting a uh, possession of the child is so that they can have access to the child's bodily orifices in which to sexually exploit. Uh, okay, so why is it all these women 
Why is it most of the time women who want primary physical custody of the child? Do they want to actually, do they want a, a, a victim to, to sexually assault? I mean, you know, I mean, the, 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 the mother could just as easily be doing it as the father is. So why is there this bias in which the fathers are, you know, typically distrusted? I mean, it's just, it's stupid, and it's misandry, and it's, and it, and it's, it's sexism. And, uh, interesting here, you know, the, the police not charging attempted murder, going for assault. Well, that's right, and, and that tells you uh, what they're thinking uh, about her motivation. They are not claiming that she was trying to kill uh, him. They're saying, in essence, that she was trying to harm him. And that's why you've got the charges here of assault, not attempted murder. Remember, they're also saying that, that she's claiming that she was doing this for attention, to get his attention. And that's what I think makes this particularly sad. There's probably um, a level of sympathy towards her on the part of the authorities here as well. But still not much of a defense, right? They're trying to get no, his it's not a legal de No, it's, it's not a legal defense. And my guess is this is the kind of case that never goes to trial. Why? Now, because these are the types of cases that tend to plead out. Meaning, if she really did confess, as the authorities claim, the authorities are saying that she confessed to doing it, here's why I did it, those are the kinds of cases that tend to never make it to trial. They tend to work out an agreement. They tend to give someone a very low sentence. So a lot of that will depend, though, on the boyfriend. That's right. He's gonna. The question is going to be: Is he ready to move forward? Is he ready to testify? Does he want a deal? How angry is he? These are all the sorts of things that become relevant in determining what kind of deal. Does the judge take that into consideration when they put this off for a few months, kind of creating a cooling off period? Uh, maybe. I mean, look, I don't think that the cooling. Okay, so apparently the dude didn't die, but still, nonetheless, you know, it was a crime. Uh, he was harmed, and, like, he should press at least as many charges against her as any woman would charge a man for doing the same thing. See, that's what I'm advocating, is equal treatment. Now, if women happen to treat men nicely, then women should be treated the same way as they treat men, which in that scenario would be treated nicely. Now, if a woman treats a man uh, harmful, then in that scenario, equality would dictate that that he treat her harmful. That That's real equality. Now, this fake shit that feminists, you know, always see what it is. Feminists, they don't want an equality of treatment. They want an equality of outcome. Uh, they, you know, they, they always, and when they say they want equality, what it is is they, they always, they always beat this dead horse of how men are privileged and all this other shit when in reality, see, you know, it's like any privilege that a man enjoys, a lot of times it, he's expected to earn and sacrifice in order to obtain that. It's a reward for his efforts and his sacrifice. Women, women uh, feminists, but what are feminists? Generally women. And you see this, even in India, where in less than, in like, what, about a decade, or within, especially within the last five years, women over in India have switched from a traditionalist patriarchy society to being every bit as much toxic as the average Western woman. Practically overnight in context of how long it took for America to get that way. Um... So, uh, I mean, you just see in these countries, which are just strongly traditional and strongly patriarchal in, in nature, and just almost overnight, just in the matter of, uh, in, in, or in the space, or the span of just a few years, usually less than 20 years, they, they adopt a feminist uh, ideology, especially radical, toxic feminist ideology, in full force within just a matter of years. I mean, it shows how the willingness in which women are eager to behave in a selfish manner. Uh, of course, you know, we always hear about how women were victims. They weren't allowed to vote. Mer. Well, you know, a lot of men didn't have the right to vote either, and feminists don't seem to bring that up. Okay? Um... I mean, 400 years ago, men did not have the right to vote. 500 years ago. You know, okay, 500 years ago, you know, in the, in the 1500s. Women did not have the right to vote. Neither did men. 
but yet feminists portray it as if men have always had the right to vote uh, for, for thousands of years and that women have only in recent decades got the right to vote or whatever. No. Women are, okay, men got the right to vote just right before women did in historical perspective. You know, it might be, you know, give or take a couple decades, but, yeah, uh, w within that range. And, I mean, it, it, it just shows the inherent selfishness of women. Anyway, you know, and, and why did men have the right to vote, you know, 100 years ago, 150 years ago? Well, that's because the male gender was obligated to defend their democracy and therefore their rights by potentially sacrificing by potentially sacrificing their lives for the cause of freedom. They were the only ones who had um who had I guess you could say not exactly well, they're the only ones who, who had really earned earned the right to vote. You know, they're the ones who participated in in democracy and defending democracy. You know, and what did women do during World War One, you know, when 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 millions of men died on the battlefield? You know, in one particular battle there were fifty eight thousand men who died just on one particular day in a specific battle. You know, I mean, you know, 58,000 men, that's the amount of the American lives lost during Vietnam, during the Vietnam War. And that spanned for about a decade. Okay? So that many lives were lost on one day in a specific battle or skirmish during World War One, And many of those men were under the age of 18. Uh, they did not have voting rights. They were of legal age for military service, but were not of legal age for voting. And they paid the price of freedom with their lives. While the female gender was back home in safety and bitching about voting rights. And this is why men ha don't really have much of a reason to take feminism seriously. off period will be uh, that much of an impact for the judge the question is why meaning did the boyfriend in part ask the authorities to hold off for a little while there are a lot of questions here we uh, we still need answered and let's make sure to coordinate our outfits again tomorrow <laughs> just you know we just got to you know that phone call before yeah before, out, you know, before, before we start the segment call. we got to do that yeah yeah <laughs> yep Jets game? Man, I can't believe the Jets won. Hashtag Jets won. Hashtag Mark Sanchez can actually throw a touchdown. Hashtag I don't cry myself to sleep at night because I'm a Jets fan. Jenny then tweets something that I thought the entire time. I Hashtag I do not care. I have zero respect for a person who seems unapologetic for the terrible crime he committed and shows no signs of changing. I mean, you just look at the situation and you look at the lack of, like, any legitimate trying to fix... Oh, wait, he, he, he hit Rihanna and, like, beat her up. Okay, did, did he do it just because he's inherently evil because he's a man and man? Or did she do something to provoke it? I mean... Okay, I'm not disputing that she got beat up, okay? Like, I'm wondering what the reason was. Was he sitting there watching a football game and then all of a sudden in a split second he just decided to demolish her face? I mean, like... You know, did she call me? I mean, what did she, what did she do to provoke it? I mean, I, with, with as many consequences that are reserved for the male gender um, in the legal system, uh, and and with as easy as it is um, for men to get labeled as aggressors, and with you know, I mean, like. With all the public awareness of the possibility that a man can be an abuser and all that, like, you know, most men are on good behavior regarding that. Most men are, most men are afraid to hit a woman. 
They'll let a woman hit them because they know they have no other recourse. Um. Oh, wow. Uh, Okay, I'm just curious here. Now, this this video, like I said, this video is to the Femetheist, you know, Dr. Claw. I got a few videos she needs to see. And she needs, okay, now, Femetheist, I need a response from you about what goes on in this video right here, okay? Now, I'm Manslave, and I'm, I'm asking this to you, the Femetheist, what your response is to what happens in this video.